and welcome. My name's Kathy A. And today I'm going to do a special show. I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I've just been waiting to collect all the products over a certain amount of time and they've all come in now. But I'm going to do a special on a Canadian brand of cosmetics called Cargo. And I know that a lot of you um, in the U.S. have seen this brand around. I don't hear it talked about all that much on YouTube. And I'm really surprised because it's such a high quality line. Um, it is a little pricier than drugstore makeup, but I'm finding the products to be exceptional. So um, I think what I'm going to do, like I do with a one brand tutorial in general, is I'm first going to show you the story of Cargo Cosmetics. And then when we come back, um, I'm going to do a quick full face makeover so you can see how I got to here from my before face just out of the shower. So. Without further ado, here is the cargo history. The cargo story begins with this lady, Hannah Zalzel. She was born in 1964 in Egypt, and at age two, she moved with her parents to Montreal in Canada. As a child, Hannah loved art and painting and drawing but as she grew up, she actually found herself attractive to physics and mathematics. So when she graduated, she went to the University of Toronto's School of Engineering, a very unusual choice for a lady. She said she loved the problem-solving concepts found in physics and science and engineering. And she also met her husband while she was at school. After graduation, she went into marketing for a little while and decided she wanted to get her own business. She decided she'd open a cosmetics company because it was something she liked and something she hadn't really found that she was impressed with with other brands. So she spent a lot of time at the Toronto Reference Library looking it up. And then she attended the School of Business, the Schulich School of Business in New York. And she studied and got her MBA and then she attended trade shows in the United States first so she could learn more about the industry and she actually met a lot of uh, distributors and manufacturers. With all this new information, she was now ready to begin the process of starting her own makeup line. But where did that name come from? Well, if you think of a woman carrying around her handbag, it's kind of like she's carrying around her cargo. And cargo, Often, when you see it in shipping, you see these large steel containers carrying the, the contents to protect it. And she thought, what rolls around in a woman's purse can really get messed up. So she wanted something very, very sturdy to withstand the pressures and uh, all the junk clanging against it. Cargo was born in 1996, and she decided to make the mainstay of her line the lip gloss container. That very same year she met with Eaton's which is Canada's answer to Macy's and she asked if they could sell her products. They agreed to feature her products in three of their locations so she quickly got back to her manufacturers. Hannah quickly got in touch with all of those manufacturer contacts she had met at the trade shows and she had several prototypes and products made in the US, in Italy, and in Germany as well as Canada. She expanded her line out to include blushes and other lip products and her innovative packaging included the 30-day single-use lipstick packets the Cool Aid Jammers uh, container inspired her foundation. And of course, she came up with the idea of stamping in instructions on her makeup, such as the eyeshadows and also the blushes and bronzers, to show you how to use them. Cargo Cosmetics as a brand really took off like lightning, and soon she was selling in the millions. She went on a brief holiday down to Florida and wondered why she had to have a blush and a bronzer separately. It was so inconvenient to carry around. She created the Blush, Bronzer and Highlighter Compact and also 
a credit card size eyeshadow card that would fit in her wallet conveniently so you could pick out your eyeshadows and use them while traveling. Now she caught the eye of Sunny Fong who was the Project Runway winner in season two and he used her makeup in his fashion show at the Toronto Fashion Festival in 2010. This brought attention to her makeup line and celebrities and fashion designers and makeup artists took note. Suddenly celebrities like Cameron Mannheim and Deborah Messing and Drew Barrymore and Helen Hunt and even Katie Holmes and Jennifer Aniston were sporting cargo cosmetics. Hannah appeared with her cargo cosmetics on QVC and they were a popular seller. She also appeared on the Dr. Phil show on television and she let his wife Robin select a lipstick from her new line and she named it for her. Hannah surrounded herself with new very talented employees such as Ansley Broadhead who is a big cosmetologist and she toured and brought onto the road all of the cargo cosmetics and she also made videos on cargo cosmetics and helped her develop new lines like Plant Love. Now this is a line of cosmetics whose packaging was made completely of corn of all things and it received many awards for its innovative style, packaging and quality. Now a lot of these lipsticks are named for celebrities such as Courtney Cox and Lindsay Lohan because they actually assisted in picking out the shades to represent them. In 2008, HD photography was introduced to the film industry and actresses panicked. They looked horrible on screen close up. So Cargo introduced Blu-ray, which was a special kind of makeup blushes, concealers, and powders that contain photochromatic pigments and light diffusing microfine particles to help actresses look more natural in HD lighting. Now this makeup was used on the set of Friends and also Malcolm in the Middle. It became very popular on the set of Six Feet Under as well as Will and Grace where Deborah Messing had introduced it to her uh, cosmetic advisor and it was used also on the set of Lost. A lot of cargo products are included in the goodie bags that they give to the participants of the Emmy and Grammy Awards. Now Hannah had created several kits. She was now a billion dollar industry in Canada and one of her famous kits was called the 7 in 7. They were seven major products that could help you get ready in seven minutes. As a busy business woman and family woman, she had three children and a husband. She didn't have a lot of time to spare and so she created kits like this to help other women in the same situation. She received tons of glam awards and beauty awards from magazines, from QVC, from different beauty organizations and cargo products were considered top rated out of all of the beauty products available. She also received prestigious civic awards for her active contribution to environmental issues and charities. She decided to relaunch the brand in England and so cargo cosmetics were sold basically in Debenhams which is a big department store in England and it took off quite well. I believe this was in 2012 but Cargo has found itself now in 1400 stores and 11 countries. This was a popular kit that was uh, promoted at the time, the Route 66 kit and the waterproof blushers and bronzers were actually demonstrated near a sink where people could actually put them on their hands and then put them under water. In the US um, the products of cargo are sold in basically Macy's and Nordstrom and in Sears and in Kohl's and when you pass by the counter of cargo know that they are cruelty free and that is such an important uh, aspect to any cosmetic line. The products are not boring or lame and they are high quality and very inventive. I really love uh, especially the kits that they come out with 
and the packaging is wonderful and it truly does stay in your handbag without falling apart and you can get down to the very last drop of all of the products the way they are packaged um, is very very user friendly Hannah believes that makeup can be empowering for women and she continues to create new and innovative and beautiful products for all of us to use and we do thank Hannah Zalzal for her innovation and for Cargo Cosmetics. I love this brand. I love this brand and I think I'm going to go on Amazon or somewhere and try to find some of those other kits. I want to get that 7 in 7 kit. That looks really fascinating. Um, and I have bought a couple of her other kits in general and I, I'm just liking everything that I've tried has been very high quality, very nice. Um, I, I can't, I don't think I have a negative word to say about any of her stuff. So um, anyway, this coming up now is a little tutorial uh, demonstration full face makeover I'm going to show you what I look like when I started and that this is kind of what I look like when I ended so the magic of video Woo! alrighty here we go with the whirlwind tour of cargo cosmetics starting it off with the lip primer the Picture Perfect HD Lip Primer. This came free with purchase of cargo products at Ulta. The next item, I didn't have their face primer, so I'm just using the Radiant Lady Skin Smoother. And this is called One Base. This is a concealer and foundation in one. And this, I think, is my new favorite, almost a holy grail foundation and it's got a doe foot applicator but I think you can use it separately from um, just pouring it out of the tube which is what I'm doing there I just think I put that on as the foundation and then use the doe foot in a concealer capacity because um, it really is a silky smooth does not set into the wrinkles kind of foundation it's absolutely beautiful this is the lightest shade, shade 01, and I am loving it. It absolutely, it's like a medium coverage. It does not sink into the wrinkles or the creases or the dents and dings. Now I'm just actually putting a little on the extra redness spots that I have, and I'm just going to blend it in with a concealer brush. And it blends so easily. You have a little bit of setup time so you can work with it. This is actually what Hannah herself wears um, as a foundation. I really like it. Now I'm checking in my 5X mirror just to see what's going on. If I have to press anything or smooth anything out, I don't have to do a thing. And yes, that's all my yard sale stuff piled up. I'm going to have even a bigger stack pretty soon. I didn't get a face powder, so I'm just using the Radiant Lady face powder. Now this is a waterproof blush called Bally, and it's a pretty neutral pink. Just putting it on uh, my upper cheeks there. And I'll probably go up through the sides of my face temples, maybe in the 10 and 2 part of my eyes, down in the decollete or upper decollete and lower neck area. I really like it. Very pleasant blush. Oops. This is the Waterproof Matte Bronzer, and this is one of the things, like in the video, they showed right next to the sink. You could actually put some of the bronzer on your hand and then run it underwater, and it would not budge. And this is just so perfect for summer. Oh, my God. And I loved it. It just blended out really nicely. There is a, sh a slight glow to it. It's not a real shiny, shiny mess. Um, you know, and I would notice that first thing on my 56-year-old skin. The next product I'm going to use actually as the highlighter is part of the eyeshadow palette called the Essential Eyeshadow Quad. And this is the Cool Neutral palette, which um, after my next video, which is on Color Me Beautiful, you'll discover that I'm probably wearing the wrong colors. 
Now I'm following the directions that are stamped on the eyeshadows. I use the brow bone first on just under my brow and now I'm using the lid shade on the lid. But I'm finding I tend to usually go to the brow bone color and put that on my lid. I like a shimmery light color on my lid. Just on the lid, not up past that little line going into the crease shade and it says crease stamped in there. I'm just doing the little windshield wiper motions back and forth, blending a little bit with my fingers. This blends so nicely. It's a very nicely pigmented shadow. It's not too powdery. It's not too pigmented so that you can't blend with it and have it sheer out nicely. I really thought they were really high quality shadows. Next color is what they call the outer corner color and I love that she calls it that because that's exactly where you put this kind of a shade right in the outer third of your lower lid there. Pretty cool. Now I'm going to take a plain brush and I'm going to just uh, blend everything together but I really didn't have to do too much because it blended nicely on its own. Just putting another touch of the uh, lid shade just up in the 10 and 2 and I'm going to use a little of the matte bronzer to warm up like a transitional shade. You know me, I'm always using bronzers and blushes as eyeshadows. Next is the Cargo Swimmables Eye Pencil in Pfeiffer Beach. It's number 5. Now these are supposed to be waterproof eyeliners and this is kind of a nice neutral uh, plum color. I really like it a lot, making a big smile face because I like it, but that I actually drew on there to test underwater to see if it actually stayed. I'm just using an Ulta eyelash curler, counting to eight on each side, but we're in fast motion here, so you are um, mercifully kept from that. Cargo Texas Lash, and I'm doing the deep in the heart of Texas little dance. That's the Texas Lash Mascara. And this was a sample I got from somewhere. I forget where. I think it might have come in a kit, in that tea kit that I had uh, several items from Cargo in, which inspired this video, by the way. It makes a nice big old honkin' lash, slightly clumpy but not bad, and I think it's a pretty good uh, formula. It lasted all day. I didn't see any dings. I didn't see any fallout. So I was really pleased with this mascara, but I want to try one of the other mascaras that uh, Cargo has, and I think there's like four different ones. I'm going back for a second coat because I like to have big old honking lashes, so I gave the first coat time to sort of dry. Here's that second coat. And now I remembered that I didn't do my brows, so I'm going to use some of the crease shadow as my eyebrow powder. And I usually use a light brown eyeshadow or I'll use a bronzing powder if it's matte as my eyebrow powder if I don't happen to have an eyebrow pencil uh, around. I know a lot of people are using the Anastasia um, brow dippy do thing, but I, I like good old fashioned pencils. Uh, I didn't get a, a lip liner, so I'm just using Radiant Lady's lip liner, and this is the neutral color, which is pretty much the color of the inside of my mouth. And then this is Cargo Lipstick. It's called Santa Fe, and this came in that Time for Tea kit that they had. It's a teensy bit dark for me, but it's very creamy, very nice, and this is what I would show you if I was putting lip gloss over the top. Now this is a single eyeshadow called Yukon. I just wanted you to see what a single eyeshadow looks. You get a whole lot of product in there. And that's the look. And here's the finished look. I am so impressed with this line. Oh my god. Have I been under a rock? I mean, I have seen cargo displays in different shops and I've walked in and of course it's on the Ulta line and I just thought, eh, meh, you know, it's, it's, it looked a little pricey actually and I didn't really know very much about the brand but I'm so happy that I tried out a variety of products from the brand because there's just such a high quality there and just the innovative packaging and the uh, the idea of the kits, that 7 and 7 is so cool. And just in general, I'm absolutely, totally impressed with this line. This uh, one base, which is kind of a combination foundation concealer, 
actually I have slightly dry skin. I have a lot of crow's feet. I have a lot of, I have like the 11s here. I have marionette lines. I have a, a ridge right here and a ridge right under my chin. And usually when I put foundations on, they settle into those areas. And this one did not. It looks so creamy smooth. Oh my God. Um, I wasn't a fan of of this doe foot applicator because uh, when I put a foundation on, I don't want to keep dipping in and pushing it on my face and dipping it back in. I, I don't like that concept at all. I think there's too much of a bacteria growth opportunity there. So I think what I would normally do is squeeze a little out on my hand, which is a possibility, which is nice, and do it that way. The fact that it's a tube, like a toothpaste tube, you can get all of it out, which again, part of her packaging scheme was that you could use all of the product and you can get all of the product out of all of her tins. There's never anything left over, uh, but I really love the tube idea of this one base and I certainly will be repurchasing this because this is an outstanding product and I think it actually is an award winner as well. Um, the swimmers I just really had to scrub. I, I drew a smile face in the demo and I just really had to scrub it hard. There's still little traces of it left, but the Swimmers waterproof uh, eyeliner is pretty nice. And this is kind of a, a muted plum color and I really like it. Uh, so despite the fact that these were kind of a satiny finish, um, they're kind of between a matte and a satin finish. I was still able to put them on my crepey lids and eyes and they worked pretty well. I love the little stamped things and this I think was the inspiration for the Wet n Wild um, stamping of their eye products. But I believe Cargo was the first to do this. So uh, I think that it's so cool and it says outer corner which I love. I mean this is like self instructional eye makeup and I think this is a wonderful idea. She was one of the first to come out with it. I know it's not a new thing and I know you've probably seen it in other brands but I think she was the first to do it this way so everybody else has kind of copied Hannah and Cargo Cosmetics. Um, the packaging is beautiful, biodegradable. Uh, um, I love the little, little scene in the front. I think it's Montreal. I think it's Montreal that's on the front. It's an ink and pen drawing of Montreal. And uh, what else did I like? Uh, the lipstick, very creamy, very nice. I think I would get a slightly lighter color. This is the one that came in the kit. You know, the um, something about tea, ready for tea or something like that kit. Uh, which I think I reviewed in my spring palettes. I think I did this in a Laura Geller together but I can't find the top, but I carry my makeup from my makeup room to my taping room in this all the time. So I do make use of the tin can that I, I think I called it a lunchbox when I first used it. So all in all, um, the mascara, this is the Tech Slash. Uh, I think I would have preferred to get the one that's kind of a triple in one uh, to see if I could get a bigger honking lash out of it, but it is a really nice mascara. Uh, a little on the clumpy side, but I really like that. I like to see a little more stuff going on on my lashes because it's my last hope. <laughs> anyway, this is the Tex Lash uh, mascara. It's one of, I think she has four or five different types of mascara, and there's a new one called 4-in-1, I think it's called, something like that. It's a, a super ultra everything kind of mascara, so I wish I had purchased that. Um, also, I wish uh, I had purchased more of the primers, and I feel bad that I didn't, but I did like the lip primer a lot. It instantly made my lips feel silky and uh, very, very good. I'm just like wicked impressed with this line. Uh, I'm going to be buying more Cargo, and I do recommend it totally. It's cruelty-free, and that's a good thing. <laughs> Um, speaking of cruelty free, I owe all of you a little bit of an apology and um, Pam if you're watching, uh, thank you for alerting me to this, but last week I did a quickie little haul review on some Maybelline products and I don't, I guess it's because I'm just so overwhelmed with everything going on right now in my life and in work and everything else and I reviewed so many products that when I saw the display with all the new Maybelline stuff, I just kind of grabbed it. It was almost like a, I don't know, an automatic response. <laughs> I 
Pavlov's dog, you know. I see something new and I start to drool. Anyway, um, Maybelline is not a cruelty-free brand. They are owned now by L'Oreal, who is the biggest evil in the cosmetic industry in my eyes. Uh, in fact, L'Oreal just bought NYX Cosmetics, and that is heartbreaking for me and for probably many other people. I actually was going to include NYX um, on my website as a page of products you could purchase, and I'm not going to now because they are now not any longer going to be a cruelty-free company, which is really sad. Um, so I apologize for talking about that and not at least mentioning that they were not a cruelty-free company. Uh, in the future, when I mention companies, I will mention if they're cruelty-free or not, but I generally will try not to talk about uh, companies who are not cruelty-free. Uh, I'm just going to try and leave them out of the program because there's, there's so many good guys like Cargo that, um, you know, I don't think I have to touch on any of the products that are not cruelty-free. So, that being said, I hope you all have a wonderful uh, long holiday weekend. It's uh, 4th of July here in the U.S. It's a big celebration. And uh, I was hoping my U.K. packet would have come by now so I could do the U.K. swap with Helen from the U.K. Ironically, it would have been funny to do it on the 4th of July. but And also, I wanted to do this cargo thing on Canada Day. So I, um, I'm really sorry. I just, uh, life steps in, you know. As John Lennon said, life is what happens when you're busy making other plans. Everybody have a wonderful week and have a beautiful day. Take care. Toodles.